here at the CCA Workbench, and it's time for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques. And Dave, you've got a lot of stuff to go over, so let's just hop on. Yeah, you know, Florida's blessed with miles and miles and miles of coastline and beaches. And, you know, if you can find a place where they haven't put a big condo up and get in your way, you can get out to the beach and catch some really cool stuff. You know, we got pompano, permit, whiting, bluefish, uh, redfish, black drum, sea trout, sharks of all shapes and sizes, you know. Um, if you can get to the shore and make a cast, you can catch a lot of cool things. And that's one of the cool things about these alvies we see out here, these side cast reels. They can cast a mile. This one here, I, I can cast, really, I got a three ounce weight on there. I usually use a four ounce just because a four ounce is good for everything. Mm -hmm. If you're using a three ounce, uh, you're probably fishing in a place where there's not a whole lot of current, but you can still get away with it. The idea of using one of these Sputniks is so that when you make those long casts, it'll keep tension on these rods and we can see a bite when something comes and eats one of these circle hooks with little floats on it. This because is this essentially becomes the anchor in the correct. sand. And then whether you're fishing with your fish bites, a shrimp, sand flea, whatever it may be, it becomes a tight. miniature long line is what got it, it is. Got it, And when you have that tension on that rod tip, what it does is it, it makes it so that when he comes and eats that thing, he's gonna he's gonna feel that resistance and become hooked immediately. And it's gonna signal that you've got a bite. If you have loose line and the fish comes up and eats it, you won't know if you get a bite. So when you have that tension on there, if a, a big fish comes and lifts that sinker out of the water and it goes slack, before it goes tight, you know you got a pretty good fish. If it's just really tight and all of a sudden it goes g g g g you probably have a small one. But if you have a good tight one and it just goes crazy and starts running drag, that means you probably got a good size pompano or a permit or a shark on there. So, you know, usually this that's, this is the rig, the kind of rig that we'll use is a two, two or three uh, dropper loop with a little two-aught on it or maybe even a one-aught with a float. Now the float is very important because, you know, it's an attractor. You know, I like white and chartreuse but but because uh, it works in all colors of water but it also keeps your stuff up off the bottom as well the tension keeps stuff up off the bottom but also those little floats keep everything off the bottom it keeps it off the catfish and some of the you know smaller croakers and stuff if you don't want to catch them you want to start using uh, catching some bigger things so you like using the eagle claw circle hooks? correct yeah the little the, those laser sharp ones uh, either the circle c or uh -huh. the ones you got there in your hand oh i see I, here's the two o's that you got yeah. on the line here yep i like the two aughts and maybe up to a three aught if you're you know in a place where you might catch a nice permit or something we're just we're just wanting to have a hook that's big enough that it'll hold your drag and won't straighten out because a lot of times you'll catch sharks and stuff that'll straighten out if you have too much drag it, it'd take a good pompano to straighten out that three aught hook even though you know so tell me th some tricks so why are guys are you putting fish bites on the hook along with a shrimp or a sand well the, the the fish bites it has a mesh inside so that when you put in if you put on a, a shrimp or anything else and you follow it up with a nice triangle of fish bites like that uh, that's a simulation there of a live piece of shrimp and then you put or a clam or even a sand flea and then you put your fish bites on behind it that way if you go to make a cast that thing should stay on there and this is a there's another little trick here well tell me about this so if this is our piece of shrimp yeah you can peel the shrimp peel so the shrimp. You, know, you usually have to leave the, the the shell on to give you an anchor of some sort but when you're using this bait elastic, you can actually peel the shrimp off. How does that work? Show me. Well, you just you just get this because it's really it's tiny, tiny elastic stuff, and you just get it on the hook, right around, grab a hold of the bait, and uh -huh. just wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around, and then when that once it gets on there tight, you pop it off, and that and that stays and holds. It helps exactly. hold the bait. It holds on there. the bait on there. A clam, a shrimp. Whatever you put on there, any kind of you know gushy live bait that you have a hard time keeping on the on the hook, this stuff is a, is a miracle. And then you know you always and follow you it up with a piece of. Then you would take a piece of your fish bites and put it on there so that. That's going to make it even better. Yeah, the fish bites. What's so cool about it is that as it. The more it's in the water, the more it starts to dissolve and Correct. put off all the cool. That's smell. a real popular color, color right now. This is the Easy Clam in the Coquina color, and this has been a really hot, hot item up and down the East Coast. We've had a lot of pompano, uh, pretty sporadic, but there's been some big ones. Uh, Melbourne Beach has been good. 
Um, Hutchinson Island has been really good. Um, but now, they've been moving around a lot, quite a bit. I notice you have these diamond swivels. What are you using yeah. the swivels well, for, Bob? When, when, I'm, when I'm making any rig, I like to have a, a really good ball bearing swivel on each end. Um, I usually put one of these uh, tournament snaps on the main line. So then I can just snap off, you know, just put a new rig on. If, if a you know, rig gets destroyed, I can just use one of those. And I don't even have to worry about the, the barrel swivel that comes on the rig because a lot, I buy a lot of rigs and they come with a barrel swivel on the top. And a barrel swivel, you know, while it, you know, it, it's, they just don't really turn that well under a good load. They're a lot cheaper, so that's what people use. But I like to use a ball bearing swivel, especially when I'm using these alvies. I'm making these incredibly long casts, and I don't want my braid to spin up when I'm reeling back in. Right. You know, with you know, if I fish on or just having bait, if everything's spinning uh, freely, then I then it doesn't spin up your line, and that can be a pain in the butt. You know, when it's windy and you're on the beach and you're using braid, because the lighter braid that you can get away with, the longer you can cast. And a lot of times in this surf fishing game. The guy who can make the longest cast wins. You know, you want to be able to cast three uh, three hundred feet. Yeah, and over that's the bar. A long cast, man. Yeah, yeah, hundred yards. That's um, a lot of good tricks, huh, Brie? It is. When did you add the tying up the shrimp to the hook thing? Just recently. Okay, yeah. that's a new one. That's how you caught that monster. <laughs> it, huh? No, I didn't. Actually, yeah. it was fish bites yep. only. Fish bites only. That well, was there a fish you bites have it. only. Easy flea. Easy flea. There you go.